What's going on, YouTube? This is Jim. this is Dark Moon Tamer coming at you with a deck profile, um, a deck profile debut. Um, well, actually, it's not a a debut technically. It's an old a blast from the past, if you can call it like that. Um, now, if you guys recall, I ran a Shadow Paladin Blaster deck, like Phantom Blaster Overlord deck, way back. I actually did a deck profile on it. Well, this time, well, that deck's actually been sold off and happily in care, been taking, is in care with a fellow friend of mine, with a friend of mine. So this time, I decided to go on a different build, and I'm I build what I consider a budget witch deck. I know, you guys are probably thinking, the witches don't come out until, like, next month. Well, this is a temporary witch deck for me, and it's, like, very budget, and you can, but... What's special about this deck is that it's a bit of a combination of both Revengers and Witches at the same time, with a hint of Shadow, pa of su of shadow Support. So without any further ado, let's get on with the deck profile. We don't want to stretch out too much. Okay, I just want to make sure the screen is actually looking pretty good. And I don't know why it liked that like that. Anyways, so for starters, I have this new starting Vanguard, Wing Edge Panther. Um, most of the cards I, I have at my disposal is all Revengers, but some of them require Blaster Dark, which I don't have, Revenger, I don't have, which I don't have. So, I'm, I'm using this one, and plus, if you look at the witches, they love their black cats. So, what she, what she does is that you put her into the soul, and your Vanguard or Rearguard gets 3,000 power until the end of that turn. So... That is actually, um, it's the same powerful ability as Subtle Bamboo Princess Kaguya in the Oracle Think Tanks. So, that I, I really do like. And I'm, I'm actually quite used to it. Like, when I played Oracle Think Tanks at one time. <clears throat> Dang it. I'm sorry, guys. I have a, <clears throat> I have a throat, throat problem. I'm still kind of sick at the time. Um, for a trigger lineup, I run four heals, the Healing Revengers. I decided to run the he Revengers um, triggers because, you know, that's how many, basically all triggers I have, besides the old versions of themselves. And for the rest of the deck, I'm also running 12 crits, so four Grim Revengers, four Death Feather Eagles, and four Air Raid Dragons. This deck is also very aggressive. Like, for some reason, I've developed most of my decks have all 12 crits. I know it sounds kind of stupid for some people, but like I said, this is player's preference. This is my this is my build, and I decided to want to share it. So that's 12 crits right there. Um, people say it's best to run draw triggers or stand triggers in this deck. And I know because the new um, stand trigger is a witch in the EB11, People say it's best to run that, that that stand trigger with that too. Well, for now, this is my idea of the build, and this is my idea about what I feel like it's totally the best. So, anyways, that's for the grade zero lineup, and so now grade ones. I have four copies of Witch of Nostrum Aryan Rod. Since the, since I ha since I run twelve crits, this is a rarity. She's also a drawing factor. She's a beginning witch. And she's also a drawing ability. Basically, when you can choose the option of resting her or not, but you can discard one card from your hand to draw another card. So basically, this is this shows a little bit more draw power to um to your hand. And plus, she's a seven she's a seven k attacker, so she's good for boosting and attacking in the beginning of games. And so the next one I have is I'm running four Black Sage Karens. Basically, she's a, um, I don't know if you guys consider him a he or a she, but basically in my book, Karen basically is a she, but I don't care. It doesn't matter. Basically, this is an AK vanilla, and she's good for the vanguard or the rear guard for boosting. I usually try to do her for boosting because that gives off more dangerous attacks than, you know, in the middle, in the beginning, middle, or late games. Okay, I like killing people. Hush. And so, next one, I'm running the new um, Quintet Wall for Revengers. Re Hellred Revenger Castle. Um, this is like the only per 
um, Quintet Wall or Perfect Guard um, Sentinel I need until the EB-11s actually come out. So, and everyone's probably going to shut down my throat saying that Mechlear is the best option for Perfect Guards, but Kessel is the only one who's a female Perfect Guard until um, Grani comes out. So, and it's not all that bad. You just need to use the right, the Quintet Walls in the right timing. That's the one thing I did learn correctly, for once. And last but not least, I'm running two Garubabals. I know, it's a blast from the past, guys. When when he attacks um, the Vanguard, as long as he's in a rearguard circle, and if your Vanguard is a Shadow Paladin, he gets 2,000 power. So he's a 9k attacker, 9k attacker. So, that's just, and he's good for boosting, so. That's... That's at least the, the good part. <laughs> and so now, for grade two, like for grade twos, I run four Skull Witch Nebins. You can discard one card from your hand and counter blast one, as long as your, as long as the unit you have in your your discard is Shadow Paladin. You can draw two cards from your deck, which occasionally for me, is actually a good thing. Like I said, guys, since my my deck is consisted of heavy counter blasting and a lot of drawing power. It's basically like a spell like in the mix. So even though nine even though Nemain's a three K attacker, there's always a chance that you can put Karen in the back, making her a total eleven K attacker. So she's still a deadly a deadly spellcaster to deal with. A deadly witch. And if you guys watch Ratty Curdy, um when she fought against um Kote in Legion in season four, she did mention that witches are dangerous for a reason. But anyways, I, next then I run three copies of Jug Bauer Avenger. Um, when he attacks the Vanguard, as long as your Vanguard has power is capable of limit breaking, he powers up by three thousand. So he's an Omac eleven k attacker on his own, only for that turn. So, and by the boosted unit in the back. Like Karen, for example, or um, Aryan Rod, that's an 18k attacker or a 19k attacker. So, this deck is also consists of power as well. Like, a lot, very aggressive, like I said, very aggro, very devilish, and very defensive. Defensive, aggressive. The best defense is a good offense, and the best offense is also the good defense. But, that's just my personal preference. Anyways, this is the main engine for the deck, too. I run four Cursed Lancers. When he attacks the Vanguard, as as long as you have a Shadow Pound and Vanguard, you can turn one card from your damage zone and turn it face up. So this is the guy that will help you provide a little bit more counter blast abilities in the late, in the early, mid, or late late games. Like Nebin, he'll just flip it back up for a free charge. So this is why it's more crucial with Etain, because with Etain's ability, this card is very necessary to unleash those other counter blasts. Plus, he's a 9k attacker, so that's that's more I can handle. <laughs> Alright, so th for great th for next, for the, finally for the grade 3s, I run, of course, the main the main engine for this deck, the main one, is the 4 Witch Cursed Talismans, e Cursed Talismans Etain. For her Limit Break ability, when she's attacked, which means if your opponent attacks her, her limit break goes off. You counter blast two, and you retire two of your rear own rear guards to retire one unit from their from your opponent's side of the field, whether it's boosting or attacking. The best option you can do with right now is that you can go like head to head, like you can attack you can attack one of their attackers or their boosters, attackers, boosters, back and forth, all that stuff. Plus, and and also with her own mag ability, as long as she's in the vanguard circle. She gets three thousand. She gets three k attack. She gets three k power when she attacks the vanguard. So that's actually a good thing. And people, I think people really do underestimate her a lot because they don't think that she's a very good card to play, a, sh a little unit to play. Everyone's always saying that Ildana is one of the best, but that might be true. But like I said, I l I'm a very huge fan of witches, and I do love Etain a lot. So. Don't be hating if you guys don't like her. And then finally, for just a safe, cautious part, I run four copies of Labyrinth Revenger Arwen. 
with her ability, when she attacks, when she attacks, you may counterblast one card to give this one, give her a three three K power until the end of that battle. So technically, that's a very it's just a little bit more. It it pressures more at it. It pressures your opponent to use more cards if they don't want to lose a certain unit or they don't want to get more damage. So this is like a little bit more power to just kill joint. So there's Jugbell who does 11k, Arwen does 13k by an counter blast, and Etain does a 13k attack just for free. So yeah. Um. So anyways, guys, that's my Shadow Paladin Witch deck profile, and I hope you guys like it. If you guys have your own thoughts about this clan or this deck, please feel free to, to comment down below, the description, or down below. And, yeah, I mean, let me know what you guys think about this deck profile. Leave, please remember to subscribe to Dark Moon Tamer, rate this video, thumbs up, thumbs it up, and, you know, leave, leave lots of comments. I want to hear everybody's thoughts about this, see if it's okay. Like I said, like I said, guys, this is a very much of a budget deck for me. This is all I can definitely afford and make in the process until the EB-11 comes out, which technically will be out next month. And I'm still in the process of saving for it. So, yes. Anyways, this is, and I thought this would like be a, a fun thing for Halloween as well. Just, you know, because Halloween's like more about witches, vampires, and all that fun stuff. Like, Darker Regulars is, or Ground Blues, or, you know, something for fun. Anyways... This is Dark Moon Tamer signing out, guys. And remember to subscribe, like I said before. And, yeah, I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Talk to you guys later. Have a great week.